joining me now, as far as people wrangled, is uh, a guy that's always fun to see and always fun to wrangle. Known him for decades, Mr. Mark Slaughter. Good to see you, bud. Good to see you, Eddie. So funny story here. We're all at the same hotel here in Austin, and around 11 o'clock, the uh, fire alarm goes off. And they had, their fire alarm in that hotel was no joke. It's strobe lights. There were about three of them in the room. And boop, boop, and strobes. And I'm in a dead sleep. So I'm like, whoa. And, you know, whenever a fire alarm goes off in a hotel or something, the in, it's like a car alarm going off. Oh, it's just an accident. You know, so you just right. lay there waiting for them to reset it. And all of a sudden, the housekeeping knocks on my door and, like, frantically, you must go. You must go. I'm like, there's really a fire? And she's like, yeah. So I grab my wallet, grab my cell phone, and I'm hauling ass down the stairs. And I run into, like, George Lynch is out there in his pajamas, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, everyone's, like, zoned out because we're like, what the hell's going on? And then we're all kind of, yeah, everyone's a little un, un, unnerved. We were just woken up out of a sound sleep and everything. And then out of nowhere, like, strolling right through, wait, what's going on? Is you. Yeah. Because you got out of there. I you- got it. Well, I, I went out. I took a shower this morning, went out and got coffee, and I was on my way back. And I was like, oh, look at that. There's a fire truck. And everybody's standing around. I'm like, <laughs> what's going on? And George is like, it must have been you. You pulled the fire alarm. That's something you would do. I go, no, I didn't do that. There's a fire truck, and everyone staying in the hotel is standing in the parking yeah, lot. The Something's parking going lot. on. Um, how are you, man? How's things? Doing great. Doing great. Just uh, been playing, and, uh, you know, we're playing Houston tomorrow, and uh, just been writing and recording and just, you know, making music. Having now, writing time. and recording for Slaughter or for Mark Slaughter, because you put out a great solo record uh, not you. too long ago. Yeah, I'm I'm writing, and I, you know what? It just comes to a point to where I think every artist is at the stage of where is the music industry going, but I still make art. I don't know really where I'm going to put this next uh uh, junk of the songs, but uh, you know I've got some great stuff coming down the pipeline. It's been a long time since there's been a new Slaughter uh, Studio it has, record, since right? 1999. It's been 20 years at this point. Are you guys trying to go for like the Guns N' Roses Award? You yeah. beat Chinese Democracy? Or well, what are you I got to get these guys out of Vince Neil's camp for long enough to be able to 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 get in the studio with me. But uh, you know, the, everybody's you know, it's a good thing. We're all working. We're all doing you know some some great stuff musically, and um, it's good. Yeah, well, that's true. For people that don't know, Mark shares Slaughter, the band, with Vince. That's got, been going on for a long time now, yeah, it has. where where it's uh, it's Blando and Zoltan and Dana. Mm-hmm. And I think I've asked you this before, but ha- you've done have you done gigs where the both bands have played? Yeah, well, we have the same and, night. Yeah, I've had it, and these guys are you know they're like you know shower and then go back out, and then you know I you know I grab my you know, rock star Red Bull and move on with my day. But, right. uh, yeah, no, we've done that, and we've also done it to where there was uh, uh, another version of, of, of you know, me going out and doing shows. In fact, uh, a week ago I had uh, Bloss came back for the first time in 17 years, and we played uh, with a, a couple other guys, uh, Jamie Millard and uh, uh, Michael Starto, the, the guy who plays with Lou Graham. Okay. Um, and we did we did a slaughter set uh, in West Virginia, and it was it was so great to play with Bloss and and uh, you know just kind of see an old friend. You know, it's it's strange. You go in and out. Everybody's busy. He's doing Trans Siberian Orchestra and all the other stuff, and you know. But uh, we all the, where it comes from, where we all played together, is is was. Uh, is a good place, you know. Hopefully, we'll get a chance to do that at some point. It seems like he's wanting to, and and for those folks that obviously we're talking about, Blas Elias, the original drummer in Slaughter, who left the band for a long time and ended up playing in the Blue Man Blue Group. Man Group, yeah. And the reason why he didn't he didn't uh, stay in the band was because he didn't want to tour, right? He had a family. He didn't want to do the touring. He bit. was that way he could be home. And again, you know, family is you know to watch your kids grow up is a nice thing to be a part of it all and i think that he was just he was just kind of burned out on it you mm. know and uh so he's he did that he for 17 years he did blue man and uh he's doing the rock vault and trans siberian and then he's doing a, a few shows with me here and there and he's playing in uh in a band with doug aldridge too yeah, Burning Burning Rain. Rain. yeah it's a great record so it seems yeah. like it seems like he's now maybe if his kids are older or whatever he wants to get out there and play a little bit he does and and he's a great player he still looks great and he plays just like he always did and you know it's just kind of it's just a nice feeling when you're you know even though i'm not i'm looking forward at an audience i can just you know you could have the feel of each guy and how they play he has just a certain feel of how he plays when we picked all the drummers initially actually nick menza auditioned for for slaughter 
Really? He was one of the back one of the, in the day. Back in the day in 1989, he auditioned, and he was great. He was like the other guy that I was like, oh man, this guy Nix is great. But Bloss, I think, was more of the kind of the the pop metal thing that we were going for at that time, you know, that we were looking for. Yeah. And, and I'm sure Nick would have been, you know, would have been great too. But you know, he ended up doing just fine with with Megadeth, you know. Yeah, I've seen Bloss play in Blue Man, and I've seen him do, you know, jam and do some stuff, and. It's um. It flows. That's it but flow, man. not only is he a great player, but the son of a bitch looks the same as yeah. he looked in the Up All Night video. He does. <laughs> he does. Like, what just the a hell? little less blonde. That's about it. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what the <laughs> hell's going on with you, man? I was like, he's just. I was like, you're ridiculously well preserved yeah. here. You time time stopped for Blas Elias. Yeah. And... yeah, touring is good. Not to, not to tour is <laughs> to keep you young. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing, man. So you um, and what's interesting about your solo record, which uh. I had you on for at the time it came out. It, spe- speaking of the Megadeth connection, right. in a way, with Ellison, long, yeah. But it came. Hey, David Ellison, who has a record label now, right. put put your record out. Right. What did you have history with Ellison? I did. In fact, uh, he has a book that's out now um, that he's just uh, life after a second yeah, one. Yeah, They're like kind of a and, sequel. Yeah, and yeah. it's 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 pretty cool. He he's going to do an audio book. He said, "Hey, man, can you report?" I did a couple quotes in there is like can you you know do those were quotes for me for audible and i'm like yeah okay but uh yeah he's the thing is about dave it just he, he's a businessman and and uh, again he's he's a nice guy and uh um we get along just great when did you first meet him i met him in 1987 where i was just getting out of a relationship with a girl and then he was Stepping into a relationship with that same girl. So I was like, Oh, hey. really? Yeah, I'm like, hey, how's it going, dude? I'm like, you know, I'm just here to grab my freaking, you know, underwear or whatever it was at the time. Well, was it yeah. really one of yeah. those things? Yeah, like, one of those things. You were grabbing yeah. your stuff and he's yeah. like, you're yeah. the outbound guy and he's yeah, the yeah. inbound? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's and he's like you know and, and I was in in Vinnie Vincent at the time and you know he has his gold Megadeth records and I'm like wow hey man how's it going he goes hey how are you doing you know and uh, we always you know he's always been a great guy just a really good down to earth guy and and then we did the rock and roll fantasy camp together and he came in and I had already been a counselor for a bit and he's like so what do I do here I said just you know just have fun and you know just treat it like a like a teacher he goes well I never taught because I was a guitar teacher. Prior to Vinnie Vincent, so it was easy for me. Yeah. And he popped right in. And one of the highlights for me is I went in and after touring with Vinnie Vincent, we, we went in to go do a jam for MTV so they could film it. And it was with Nico. And and uh, it was uh, Dave on bass. I was playing guitar as another guitar player. And Nico on drums. And, Nico McBrain. Yeah. And and Ellison on bass. And we played like Run to the Hills. And and at the end of it, you know, Nico said, I didn't know you played guitar mate and he just slugged me in the arm you know <laughs> it, it was fun because he had no idea that i even played guitar so we had such a it was such a blast to catch up after he only knew me as a vocalist well you're one of those guys and i i often think of like um miles kennedy is like this too where he's told me this many times i don't know to the, to the same degree as miles but miles never even wanted to be a frontman singer like his whole trip is guitar he's studied mm-hmm. guitar he's both right. slash and mark tremonti have both told me that miles is a better guitar player than either of them but nobody no. knows it because right. he he's just blessed with that voice yes. yeah and in in alter bridge mark plays uh i mean miles plays guitar equally almost to mark but in slash he's just singing just singing yeah uh, for the most part and uh I've talked to Miles about that a lot of times. He said, "Yeah, he goes, I, I, he goes, I'm actually uncomfortable without a guitar around me when I'm out it's there." It's a security blanket that's hard to to get rid of. In fact, I just I just uh, texted uh, uh, Bumblefoot. Just texted me. He's singing for Asia. I know. Yeah. So he he had a, a video clip on uh, Instagram of him just singing, and it is an odd thing when you put your guitar down and all of a sudden you're you're uh, just a singer. It is a very you know it's it, it's kind of a freaky thing when I did that as a guitar teacher and and then I was next thing you know I was the just a singer for Vinnie Vincent Invasion that was really weird for me because I was like every day with a guitar in my hand. So but see, I can understand you joining up with Vinnie and him wanting just the front man because there's so much of the guitar playing is about him. Yeah. 
But when you uh, join Slaughter, I know you'd, you'd, you'd bang around on the guitar a little bit during Slaughter live back yeah, then. Yeah, just a little bit. But, uh, just a little bit. But why didn't you play more in Slaughter? Why wasn't that more of a two-guitar thing? Well, the thing is, is it, there is a different dynamic of when you have a guitar in front. And Paul Stanley and, and, and Dave Medichetti, there's very few who have actually bridged that and been a front man that can still work a crowd. Um, I think it, once you put the guitar down, there's, it, it's almost like a, cr a crowd is right there in your hands a lot easier than when you have a guitar on. They don't react the same. Mm. I don't don't know why, but if you put on put down the guitar and you say, "Come on," and you get closer to the audience, they react differently. Right. So I mean, it's the same thing with David Bowie. He was a guitar player and he was just a singer all the time, but he was a good guitar player as well. Do you um, do you still play a lot of guitar every day? Yeah, you I do play all the time. Yeah, I love it. I've, I'm surrounded. My whole studio is covered with, you know, 40-plus guitars. Wow. I, have, I have them just hanging, you know, all the time. And I have seen you play. You know, I've, I see you guys play all the time still today. We're always at, showing up at the same. Sure. Like, here we are in Austin, yeah, yeah. Texas, right. in Randy's living room, you know? Yeah. Um, but but you uh, you still, I mean, the, the vocals you recorded on those early Slaughter records are unbelievable. And what's astonishing is, because I often talk about and take calls from people who talk about the guys that can't do that stuff mm -hmm. anymore, and they've got to tune down, they've got to change, or they're do, you know, singing to a track or whatever mm -hmm. they have to do. I mean, I, I don't know. You, you were blessed, I, man. I don't know how. I had, I had a really high voice when I was when I was a kid. I still have a high voice, but I've sung all those songs a half step higher than what they were recorded. So for the musicians out there, we tune down to D, you know, like you know, really like a whole step down. And then when we started getting into rehearsals and we were going to open for Kiss, we were like, our strings feel sloppy. And I didn't like the way the strings felt, neither to Dana or Tim. And so we said, well, let's just go up a half step. Let's listen to it. So we played the songs like a half step higher. And I go, I can, I'm comfortable with that. I actually like singing a little higher. So because with Vinnie Vincent, it was like, you know, it was ionosphere. So it was comfortable for me. So I've actually, for 30 years, it's almost 30 years at this point, uh, coming up this next year for Slaughter, that I've sung the whole set a half step higher than the record. Wow. So you, Which did, is you weird. put in, you like, it was like swinging the bat with a donut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you gave me so some cushion. Yeah, yeah. That's I did. pretty awesome. I That's did. Great foresight by yeah, you. Yeah, so it's, it's pretty easy. So I've actually sung it a half step higher than the record. You know, whole life. Wow, life. that yeah. is amazing. 